Hello, hello. Welcome back into the Chi Time podcast with me, Clara Apollo, where we chat about your energy and how your energy really matters and and what you can do to help yourself gather more of it and what to do when you don't feel like you've got very much of it. And what I'd like to do right now, actually, is to just bring us into this presence place of being. So thank you so much for joining me. I have the throat chakra Tibetan bowl with me. So I'm just going to ding this with you now. I just want you to take a deep breath in and let yourself land in this present moment of beauty. drink that in with my breath. I kind of recognize the nourishment coming through the sound. Ah, and, and you have to be in the present moment to appreciate it, don't you? And whenever we are drawn back into the now moment, that's where we can replenish ourselves. That's where we can really meet ourselves. And that's where we can kind of come back to this place of resource and you know what I'm just going to fess up a bit here that oh, or just acknowledge that I have stepped away from the mic for most of the summer because I'm recording this on the 1st of September and it was kind of in the back of my mind that I just wanted to, to take some time away you know I, I work with the seasonal the elements that run around the seasons and Part of that is being able to let yourself come into stillness and actually stop. But honestly, where can you do that in this day and age? There's a relentlessness to our lives these days where we kind of expect it or we expect ourselves to keep running, to keep running. And there was something about the energy of the solstice that was so beautiful and all that heart song qigong that I'm still right in the middle of investigating and exploring and I will be chatting about that a bit. Um, but part of that was the acknowledgement that after you come to the zenith of the year, which is what the summer solstice is, then there's a bit of plateau time. And I don't know about you, but I remember the energy of the school holidays and how we could just take a breath out and go, ah, no more school books, no more rule books. And, you know, I'm in my early 60s now and I still remember those, the energy of coming to the end of the, the term and having some space. And so my feeling was that when I come into doing podcast for you. I just want to be inspired by it. And I want to drop in because I want to hang out and and share some stuff with you that might be useful to you to help you through what's happening for you at the moment, um, which, if you don't mind me saying, being really bold here, um, tuning into a lot of what I'm noticing about conversations going on in my arena and also around that so many people are feeling, feeling utterly exhausted. There's a kind of, not only physical exhaustion, but there's this sort of existential weariness. Do you know what I mean? Yes. And and that's kind of what I was tuning in with over the summer. Like I just needed, I knew that my system was calling for me to step out of the usual routine and to see if I could find some places to just be. And, you know, those of you that know me, I'm a, a solo entrepreneur. I've been at this for years and I do my best. And sometimes I need to rest a little bit more. And so on a daily basis, so I'm going to ask, ask you this. You know, when we talk about rest and recuperation, What's the first feeling that comes in for you when I make that suggestion? You know, yeah, guilt. Am I allowed to do this? There's always another job, isn't there? Always something else knocking on your door to go, well, you've got a bit of time off. Maybe you could get crack on with that task that you put on the back burner for a little while. And you're like, hang on a minute. I can feel that my system needs me to really come into balance 
into restful balance. So personally, right, I'm going to just share with you what I do because I'm pretty busy. I'm, um, I've am i got triple fire running through me in the astrology. Um, I've got a lot of passion for life. I know I'm here to be in top value service and a lot of the tools and techniques that I I share, I know are really relevant for us in this day and age. And so my practice is, what do I need? I ask myself when I step away from a busy old time on the computer, you can tell my, my hands are speeding up here because sometimes it gets really fast in there, doesn't it? And you're speeding on and it feels quite good. You take off the jobs, it's like, yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's like, whoa, my brain is starting to get fried. Step away from the computer. Okay, what do I need? Cup of tea. Well, maybe, or maybe I could go outside. And I tell you what, when I get outside and I almost like this, this reminds me of when I used to live in the New Forest, when I knew that because I was still bringing my boy up then and there were times where you've just got to defrag, haven't you? You've just got to get out. And when you can do that, it feels like running away. I'm running away. But you're running back into nature or you're running back into your time. And I'm, um, I don't know if you uh, chart the steps that you make every day. And if you've got smartphones, they do it for you any, anyway. But there's something about recording the time that you give to yourself as an acknowledgement of like, I did that. I looked after myself. Oh, my goodness, I felt better when I came back in. Yeah. So that's what I feel is a conversation that is really worth having, because I tell you what, I need this conversation. I need to be reminded to step away from all the busyness and step outside or step into personal practice or um, read that book or make some journal notes or just this... um, you know, all the planets are in retro. I mean, I look into the astrology. Um, I, you know, listen to Pam Gregory and and other astrologers as well. And, you know, tuning in with this review and reflection time with all the planets being in retrograde motion, most of them anyway. I'm not going to go into detail here because, you know, I'm not an astrologer. But that value, that personal value of being able to reflect and review on your life is huge. And I've got to be honest, I don't do it enough. And I've realized through doing some more um, uh, uh, trainings over the the summer and looking for the pieces of the jigsaw that I'm not doing. And that's a piece, the piece of the review and reflect. It's like, well, of course, because that's giving me time back to myself again. And oh, I've got all these jobs to do, you know. Oh, self-talk. So, you know, this idea of when we look after ourselves it feels a bit indulgent doesn't it it's like oh doing it for myself is that being selfish oh stop with the fish (laughs) it's not about the fish it's self-full when you you know this when you fill your cup you are going to be able to offer better quality energy into the world and we need to keep reminding ourselves of that because we've got this old conditioned patterning through our nature nurture of upbringing and culture that it's it's not right to give yourself your time and your and your energy but it absolutely is and that's where the magic is and that's where the power is and that's what I'm here to chat about with you and bring in some simple techniques for you to consider if you would like to come play with me cheerfully which is what this podcast is all about so Are you sitting comfortably? If you're not, sort yourself out. I'm sitting on a squeaky chair, but it's really comfortable. So I'll try and stop myself from moving too much and squeaking. But, you know, this is real life. This is what what it's like. I'd rather be, be comfortable when I'm chatting with you. And let's have a little look at this idea of stopping, stopping doing. Now, you might be listening to this whilst you're cooking your food whilst you're on the move. Hmm. Okay. Well, I I understand that as well. So we've got a concept of taking our foot off the gas. What does that feel like? What does that mean to you? What does like a bit of freewheeling mean to you? No, I'm not, I'm not actually joking here. This is getting us into a an area of cheerfulness where we can start relying on the energy that is already there for us 
Yeah. So it's already there. We're sitting in it. We're already in the process of moving forward because of time. We're already in motion because we're on a planet that's swiveling around. It's like 66,000 miles an hour or something. Why don't we just lean into that or drop down into that? So right where you're standing or sitting now, you might feel like you're coming into stillness, but it's not actually possible to be still. What you're doing is connecting with the energy that's underneath you that is there for you to gather and harness for your vitality. And this is where we can get into some of the um, the background of the traditional Chinese medicine that, oh my goodness, helps me so much to remember. Which bit is that now, Clara, that you're going to chat with us about? I mean, there's so many aspects. But this fundamental piece to do with your energy really helped me understand why these cultivation practices were so important. Also, pretty easy. We just need to remember to do them. So, in traditional Chinese medicine, there is an understanding that when you were born, you are gifted a certain amount of primordial energy, like as a, as a bequeathment from both of your parents, your prenatal chi. And this is said to sit around your kidney area. Now, when we use up that quotient, we die. Sorry to be so blunt, but you know, when you've used up all your energy, you pass on. Now, that kind of makes sense because when we're younger, we've got that bounce back factor, haven't we? And we're like, you know, burn the candle as many ends as you can. I was really, really good at that. I was always proud of myself for that before I knew about this, this uh, primal energy directive. So when I was in my early 30s and I first started going into some healing because I was absolutely knackered, my lad was, you know, under five and full of the joys. And I was feeling like I was, I think I remember saying, I feel like I'm in my 60s. I had no idea that actually when I was in my 60s, I'd be feeling pretty vibrant and funky. But anyway, back in my early 30s, I thought 60s was really old. <laughs> Anyway, so um, when I went to see this this healer, healer chap, and some of you might know this story already, but bear with because it's a good one to remind us of. Um, and he was doing some some healing on me. I didn't really know much about him. He was the dad of one of my lad's best mates. So I knew he was a good chap and his missus as well. And um, he just said to me after the healing, he said, uh, do you know what your your problem is really? I'm like, no, what? And he said, your prenatal chi is shot. I'm like, what on earth is prenatal chi? And is this serious? And that's when he explained to me what I've just told you about is this fundamental level of energy that you're given when you're born. And and he said, yes, it is pretty serious. And I'm like, oh, am I, I, I feel so young I'm, <laughs> and all of that. He said, but don't worry. He said, there are, there's a particular energy exercise method that is designed com entirely to help you create more postnatal chi that helps to enhance what it is you have left. And I'm going, give it to me, baby. No, I didn't quite say that, but you know what I mean? It's like, come on, I'm interested. I'm, I'm curious about this. And he said, well, I'm actually teaching this now. It's called Qigong. I'm like, what is he talking about? But gradually, as I went into the sessions and I started to reclaim my, my ability to move my body for movement's sake, we'll just put it like that, um, this joy of having a physical vehicle for the sheer joy of it came back to me. You know, I'm an ex-dancer and I'd kind of got snags in me, in my hips and my shoulders weren't good. And I was like, I'd forgotten how lovely it is to actually move for movement's sake. And, um, and then I began to learn about it more. And, and really, after the first session I had, um, yeah, it was just I really got deep sleep and I woke up feeling like I'd had a proper night's sleep. I actually felt nourished instead of waking up feeling like, what was that? I didn't, did I actually have any sleep then? 
So that got me along the road of investigating personal energy and the choices that we have. And yeah, yeah, I've got to admit that I did kind of push against it a bit and go, oh, fine. But actually, I kept coming back to it, I kept coming back to it. And that's why I'm, I'm here now with you to let you know that no matter how tired you feel, no matter how exhausted and weary with it you feel, you have the potential for re-energizing yourself simply, effectively, you just need to remember to do it. And that's what I'm here for. So as we tune in with the energy of the seasons, this is like a perfect time, perfect time to come into this now. Because, you know, if we're talking about going back to school, which of course we're not, but our kids or grandkids might be, you know, that gearing up to get everything ready for school. Could we give ourselves time to be able to nurture ourselves well so that we've got this power source that we can feed off positively that can sustain us through the autumn and winter months? Because this is a really powerful time and let me explain why. So thank you. For, if you're still here listening, thank you so much for being here. Oh, really, really appreciate your attention. And so what I'm going to share with you now is the power of the earth element and how we can nurture and cultivate through the practice of balance. So in traditional Chinese medicine, of which qigong is a part, the the seasons run round from in, in accordance with the elements as well. So starting in the winter with the water element, and then we have the wood element in the spring, and then I kind of slide the air element in between the wood element and the fire element. Discussions about that soon. Fire element in the summer, and then at the end of the f of the summer we come into the late summer, which is where we're here now in early September, and we have the earth element. I know. And then we go into the metal element or the crystalline element in the autumn. And so it rolls around again. And so what an ideal opportunity for us to check in with our earthing practices. So what do you do? What do you do to ground yourself already? What is already in your everyday life that you think, yeah, more grounding. Yeah, I need to do my grounding. Or what is my grounding? And it's for all of us to kind of find what that is for us. I mean, I'm just going to throw, throw a few suggestions out here and you can chime in with a yay or like, oh, I hadn't thought of that. Um, and I just imagine you sitting across the table from me with your cup of tea and we're kind of, uh, you know, chewing the, uh, chewing the chi between us. Um, so go grounding. What do you do? Well, barefoot on the ground, right? That's the most powerful thing to do. Barefoot on the ground when at all possible. Simple, effective, job done. But may I suggest that you do it for a little bit longer, that you let yourself maybe sit outside with your feet on the ground as well as standing. And when you do that, notice how it makes you feel. Notice, notice what it does to your awareness when you connect in with the Great Mother. <sighs> often inspires us to take that deep breath and to ground down and let your roots unfurl and remember that you're part of the earth and that she's always there to hold you and she wants to feel your weight so you could shake yourself down shake your weight into the earth because your weight is aware is a way of having a conversation with the earth yeah. And it's just so brilliant. So you're probably already doing all of that. So how, how do we ground when it's not very warm outside or when it's raining or whatever? What, what other grounding methods can you use? Well, do you have some stones or some rocks that maybe you've brought back from nature? Obviously asking permission first, but something that you could hold that reminds you of the power and the strength of the earth. Do you give yourself permission to lie down at a moment's notice? I'm not jesting here. I found that this to be the most, the quickest way to recharge. 
And actually, it was when my lad was growing up and I, it was pretty intense and I was, you know, teaching cheese sessions and I'd be like, oh, I just had a rant with him again. Oh, dear. How do I ground myself? How do I come back into balance? I'd be like, I know. I'll just slip into a bit of lying down. And so lying down gives us a larger surface area in connection with Mother Earth. Yeah. Which means we can let go and let her support us more and more. And your out breath. Your out breath helps you surrender. It helps you come into the potential for a pause point. That regrouping, that remembering that you are a child of the earth. And the earth always has your back and your feet and your sides. The earth always has you. And, you know, I don't know about you, but when I first sort of embodied that, it was such a big relief. My shoulders were like, why have I been holding on to them so much? Why are they up around my ears? Because I'd forgotten to let them go. Do you know what? There's a little secret in here. <laughs> oh, dear. So this is the secret that entices me in again and again to explore this pause point, this stillness, this place of being. And this is a part of the, the Taoist studies that I've been part of for so long, that when we come into the pause at the end of the out breath or the pause when you're just standing outside or that pause in the moment when you remember that you're a cosmic being. That pause where you connect in with your heart. And somehow you just find that place of balance for a moment. And maybe it goes, expands for you in that moment. Maybe you're just like, oh, that was interesting. Let's move on. But I tell you what, just just connecting with that pause point for a, a nanosecond, the fact that you've noticed it, it gets you into that place of potential for the deepest energy resource. So, yeah, here's the yin yang again for you. So when we drop into the pause, the stillness, the stopping, the deepest yin, you let go of tension, you let go of anxieties, let go of worries and fears. All of these are energies that want, are moving through your system and need you to stop, connect with the earth so that her transformational exchange can take place. You release the old, create space for the new. So that's what happens. At the end of your out breath, and in other ways as well, of dropping into that liminal space of being is where you connect with the potential for deepest resource. I know. And if that is not a good enough excuse to stop what you're doing right now, don't know what is. Because if you're feeling tired, weary, exhausted, just about had enough, but you know but actually, if you can come into stillness, this will actually resource you. When I first learned that, I was like amazed. Does this actually work? So I'm going to say to you, have a little experiment. See how that could come into your life. Does that work for you? I'd love to know. I, <laughs> it's, it's, you know, this one way conversation, but it's no, I can feel you. I can feel there's a curiosity opening within you. And if that's what I'm here to do, brilliant. If you feel like you want to um, actually respond to me, then come over to the, the Chi portal in Facebook group or into Chi Time TV on um, YouTube or just message me on Facebook. I'm there under Clara Jo Apollo. And yeah, let's see what can evolve here as we lean more and more into the surrender of this time of year and that also is a very powerful place to drop yourself into 
as the seasons are falling, which is what it is from the fire, like the energy the fire goes up connects you with spirit. That energy is a deep, true connection and it's been fired up in you. But then the physicality of it drops back down. The physical um, embers of the fire will drop down to the earth as dust, as, um, yeah. And that, so that returning to the earth, everything's returning to the earth. But we are also in harvesting time, harvesting the energy of the seasons so far, the bounty of the year, that which you have done already. And there's a beautiful kind of scooping movement that you can do. You might like to just play with this. Scooping the arm around, the palm facing into your body. Scooping in the energy that's around you. Scooping it in. Scooping it in. I'm going to invite you to scoop it into your dantian and your lower belly because that's what I'm like. But you might find that you want to scoop it into your heart or into your throat or into your head or into your base chakra. You're scooping in the energy. Now, this is a great uh, movement to do when you're in nature, that you want to gather it in. And this is where if you are out in nature, I will suggest you bring it into your sacral chakra, lower dantian. This is your power place. Well, it's your foundational power place. And I'm, I'm here kind of scooping around all the equipment here, trying to not to knock anything. <laughs> um, probably will. But anyway, um, scooping in, scooping in, scooping in, gathering in. It's, it's, it's your right to be able to scoop stuff in. Positivity is there for me and that kind of stuff. Bringing it in, bringing it in. <sighs> so, my lovely friends. Um, there's something going on this September. There's, there's several things going on this September in the chief way. So I don't know where you're listening to me here, whether you're in the UK, near the southwest, which is where I am, or whether you're in far-flung countries. I have an invitation for you. Yeah, so you know that this place of stillness is a place that you can gather your fundamental primal energy force source from. Would you be interested in learning how to cultivate that into a harmonious, peaceful practice that is always there for you? Yes, I have tried lots of things over the years and I always bring it on back to this inner compass of my inner alchemy process of what feels right for me or what's actually already going on that I hadn't noticed. And through the heart song Qigong, uh, which is at the root of everything that I'm doing now, has come this very strong um, guidance or urge to like time to share the infinity flow time to share how this can bring harmony and balance into your everyday life really I've again going back to when my lad was a teenager <laughs> I was so glad for these practices but this is one of the the this is how it started the ramifications of working with the inf infinity flow was when I was feeling very under pressure from all his ranting and raving, bless him, and me being a single mum. And I'm like, how do I do that? How do I take care of myself when all this is coming at me? And I just used to, you know, when he was on one and there's nothing I could say that would help, I didn't need to diffuse the situation by taking myself away. So I used to have a treatment room that I called the Rose Room that was next to my kitchen. And he'd be ranting about something and I'd be like, mate, I just need to go into my room for a bit. And then he'd rant about that. But I'd close the door and I'd stand with my back against the door and I'd run a particular Qigong movement to do with the infinity flow. And I'm not going to lie, I used to run it pretty quickly to begin with because I was a bit anxious and like, I don't worry about things. And it really helped to bring me back to my presence, to my truth, to my connection to the earth, the heart and my cosmic consciousness and to harmonize the energies of heaven and earth through me and bring the potential for peace in, in a different way, in an energetic way. 
And this is what we're here to do at this time. Yes, words have got energy. Of course, they have. They're important. But words can also be distorted and uh, received in a, in a way that maybe we didn't intend them to. But when we move energy, it can only be the truth of the movement of it. You know, there's, it's like uh, energy movements, um, energy flows are the same in every language. They are a language of their own, of course. And when we bring this in for ourselves. Yes, it activates the harmony that wants to be there at a cellular level all the way up. And this movement I've used in all my Reiki trainings and Reiki healings. And I was thinking, oh, maybe I'll wait and do some Reiki Qigong and stuff. It's like no time to wait. We need more peace in the world. We need to embody harmonious energy. Yeah. And so when we do this for ourselves, we are then able to bring that into the world and I would love to share how you can do that easily and effectively and multi-layeredly or multi-dimensionally which is where it gets really exciting calmly you understand and that means that you can uh, harvest more energy for yourself gather that in, in in this beautiful way and then be able to give thinking like that picture of a chalice the kind of a chalice filling up with harmonic resonance so we've got the when I say harmony to you what is what what comes up what you, harmony yeah what comes up for you there you know there's different interpretations of that word isn't there and I think that's why the heart song is at the base of it all do you remember when I was t chatting to you about the s-o-n-g which is the Chinese word for gifting yourself your presence. That you first thing you do, you come into settling, either standing, sitting or lying, that you settle yourself. And then the O is you observe. You observe your breath. You observe how you feel, what conversation your system is wanting to have with you. And then the N of song is about nurturing. What nurturing action can I give myself right now? And then the G is the gathering. That gathering the resource. So the heart song. <laughs> um, where was I? Chalice, that was it. Chalice at the heart. The harmonic of your heart. The resonance, the frequency of your heart. Yes. In fact, I'm sitting here now with my palms facing each other in front of my heart, imagining a chalice here filling with this beautiful, balanced, harmonic energy and the infinity flow within it. And tuning in with you and your heart energy, frequency and flow. Yeah. And knowing that that's where we really connect with that harmonic frequency in the quantum field. And this is how we can hold and support one another. And this is how we can also hold and support others because we know how this feels. And when we embody it and know it for ourselves, that then puts us in a place of being able to share with others just by your presence. The gift of your presence is enough to bring a calming salve into other people's lives. Once you've given it to yourself, you cannot help but share it with others because that is your harmonic frequency. That is the resonance you're walking into the world with. That is what you're breathing out every time because the energy of the brain, you know, we're sharing the air, aren't we? Let's breathe out peace, calm love, kindness, compassion, ingenuity, curiosity, positivity. I could go on, but probably won't for very much longer. Not on this episode of the Chi Time po podcast. But you know what? Thank you so much for listening. I hope some of this has been useful for you. If you want to come over and see what I'm up to in September, then go to the website, claraapollo.com. And I have some in-person sessions in the New Forest happening on the 17th of September 
And in Glastonbury, have a day retreat on the 24th. Oh, yes. And the online course, the Infinity Flow, begins next week, actually. But it's on replay and stuff. And you can get it on the Chi Portal app as well at any time. Um, I'm just here to help you resource yourself. I was going to say truly, madly, deeply, but maybe you don't have to be do the madly bit just do truly and deeply and kindly and ah, just let you give yourself a hug give yourself a hug and know that balance is always seeking you will you respond to its call can you sense the balance in you every single cell is balancing right now It can't not. That's its main remit. And the balancing act of your breath is always there, bringing you into equilibrium, biochemistry, (laughs) and that your heart is beating its lub-dub rhythm, your inner drum, reassuring you. Letting your your blood chemistry be in balance. <sighs> so yes, balance is your birthright. Balance is your best friend. Balance is always there, and it's not just about being able to balance on one leg or. It's about being able to balance your life between the yin and the yang, and that sweet spot of stillness in between them that may just be momentary but you noticed it and you know because you're a chi player that that is where you deeply resource so keep your chi up my friend your energy is important and you have more choices than you realize thank you so much for listening